to see each and every one of you here this morning. Look at the beautiful people. You know, God said we should always love each other regardless of who they are. And I love each and every one of you. So here's your great big hug. Ooh. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. And we thank you all so very much for being here this morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Mary Matthews, the first vice president of the NAACP here in Lee County, and I will be replacing Miss Dangerfield this morning. I greet each of you in the matchless and the marvelous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We're going to ask uh, Reverend Dr. Gene Cobb, the pastor of St. Luke United Methodist Church, if he will come at this time and give greetings. Let us give him a hand as he come forth to do that. Well, good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to St. Luke United Methodist Church where the dream is still alive. A bigger and a better and a more wonderful day is coming. And you can count on it. Because of people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And each of us who hear God's voice and respond to it in the way that we're doing. Someone said to me just a little while ago, uh, we're glad you had us back. Well, if you go anywhere else, I'm going to be hurt. <laughs> We love having this gathering here every year. And we hope, we hope that you have found a place here you can call home. Because that's what our God has made, is a, an earthly home for us now. Because a heavenly home is coming. Amen. Keep the dream. Welcome. for that wonderful welcome this morning. At this time, we're going to ask uh, Templeton Congregation of Choir if they will come and lead us in our opening song. Let us all stand as they come to lead us in precious Lord. And the song is found on the back of your program. Yes, Lord, take my hand.
Wait a minute, do you want me to say my name? Yes. Okay. I'm Pastor Gene Cobb of St. Luke United Methodist Church, and we're here today to honor Dr. Martin Luther King, who not only was one of the greatest preachers of all time, but was one of the great moral leaders of the 20th century, who impacts my life to this day because of his impression on all of us to have a dream to move forward and to make a better world, to work for God and do His will. Well, it's a real honor to be here today uh, in Sanford at St. Luke's um, to commemorate and to remember Dr. Martin Luther King. And what I most admired about Dr. King was his message of inclusion and his message of love and his message of respect. So today I want everyone to remember that we need to be respectful of each other and we need to love each other. And I think that's what Dr. Martin Luther King wanted of all of us. So uh, I encourage everybody to think about that today. Uh, let's, let's work as a state and as a country to respect each other and, and let's, let's work to, to help people uh, that are less fortunate than us. Uh, there's a lot of people that, that have issues that we, need to, to, uh, that we need to make progress in. And, and I'm working in the state right now to do a lot of things, especially in mental health, behavioral health, uh, the opioid crisis that's going on, and also uh, just looking at the whole uh, penal system that we have. We've got a lot of people that are in jail right now that have mental health issues. So uh, uh, that's what I'm committed to and I'm working on. I encourage everybody today to uh, remember Dr. King and all the things that he stood for and the things that he reminds us of. Have a great day. My glass is straight. Uh, today we are here to honor the legend of the Dr. Martin Luther King, and you know he fought for civil rights, and he fought for riding school buses, all this stuff he brought into force, and today, today we are here to celebrate that occasion. Thank you. As we're together today to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, it's evident that his dream is still alive all people coming together regardless of their background for a common purpose and that purpose is to love and support one another. Hello I'm Sheriff Tracy Carter and uh, it's an honor to be here today honoring Dr. Martin Luther King um, his birthday and uh, I can say without any reservation that America is a better place because of him and, and so is Lee County and Sanford. Hey, Dr. King was an amazing man. His strategies, his methods of how to find freedom and equality was, he had it all. And so we, we look up to him today because of those uh, characteristics that he had that we may fight with today. We're honored to be here today as we are celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, on his birthday. And truly, he was pushing education. And he always said, just do the right thing. Us coming together is doing the right thing. Martin Luther King, a man of great dreams. Dream the dream that cannot be that killed. Dream the dream that shall go on forever. Don't worry about Martin, because he done got his dream. 
We just need to make ours. A great man brought forth a lot of things, but we thank God that God was with him and he could continue to be a blessing from now until. God bless you. Yes, I'm former representative Leslie Cox, and I want to wish our friend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. a happy birthday. If he were here today, he would tell us we're going in the right direction, but we still got a distance to go. So happy birthday, Dr. King. I'm here to celebrate the, doc, the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, as a young boy, I, I, th I thought he was the greatest, and uh, I really respect all the work he did, and I hope that what I do, I'm a jazz musician, I hope that what I do helps bring all the people together too. And uh, through Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and jazz, I think there's just so much that the African American people have brought to America. And I try in my own little way to help make people aware of all the great things he did. So, thank you. from going crazy. He said, I'll see my wife and son in just a little while. And asked him what he meant. Oh, I did. Then he looked at me and smiled. Said, I raised my hands. I bow my head. And find him more true and the words return and read they tell me that there's more to life than just what I could see oh I believe oh I believe A few years later, I was off to college, talking to mom on the phone one night. Get all caught up on the gossip. The ins and outs of the small town like She said, oh, by the way, son, oh, old man Wrigley has died. Later on that night, Laid there thinking back. Thought about a couple long lost songs. And I didn't know whether to cry or laugh. If there was ever anybody who deserved a ticket to the other side, will it be that sweet old man who looked me in the eye and said, I raise my hand? Bow my head to find it more and more true. And the words return and read. They tell me that there's more to life than just what I could. 
could see I can't quote the book A chapter or the verse But you can't tell me It all ends in a slow ride in a hearse I know I'm more and more convinced The longer that I live That this can't be no, this can't be, no, this can't be all it is. But I raise my hands, bow my head. No, I find it more and more truthful. And the words really turn in red. They tell me that there's more to life than just what I could see. I believe. I believe Ooh, I believe Thank you. Clap our hands and give God some praise in here for just a minute. And listen, if you give me three minutes, I know that our time, um, I know I've been here for a minute, but give me three minutes because I just believe that as we look at the uh, the person of Martin Luther King Jr., I know he, I know we look at the history, but I believe in the message that lives on today. Um, I, because there is a message that he preached uh, every year in his lifetime to all of his troops in this battle against freedom and inequality. That sermon that he preached, matter of fact, was preached 2,000 years ago um, um, by Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount. Um, in November 1957, Dr. Martin Luther King used the same vehicle, put his own gas in the vehicle, and let the Holy Spirit drive it. And so today I want to pick up where Martin Luther King left off in November of 1957 because that message still lives today. And I want you to pick up this message and be able to go forward from here. Because one thing about, I've come to understand, you can get the history of the past, but how are you going to keep fighting on today's to come? So that, that message is found in Matthew, the, the fourth chapter, excuse me, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 44th and the 45th verse. The reason why, because Martin Luther King had a, he had, um, he had a method, he had strategies to this fight he was doing. Now, the fight that he was doing, he said, I want to do this fight with no violence. Now, I don't know about you guys, but um, mama taught us, well, mama didn't teach us, that um, when someone does something wrong to you, the first thing you do is hit them back. Uh, because that's just our natural being. When someone um, reacts, you automatically react. But Martin Luther King understood that, listen, the same way that people act towards you, you can't react towards them. And so in, in the message here, there's three questions that is answered. It is who, it is how, it is why. I want you to understand those, um, those questions because those answers are right here. Matter of fact, the Sermon on the Mount was Jesus' topic of the sermon. Martin Luther King's topic sermon was, love your enemies. But if you can let me bring you to 2018, look over to your neighbor, tap them by the hand. We've been here for a while, so it's time to talk to somebody. And look up your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Don't, hate. don't hate. That's it, that's it. Don't hate, don't hate. Uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the fifth through the 40, 41st verse, verse, it says, um, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despisably use you and persecute you. 45th verse says, That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. Let me break the questions down to you and go to my seat. Let's, he says, who? Who should you love? He says, love your enemies. 
the question being today because some of us don't even realize who our enemy is. Because sometimes your neighbors can be your enemies. Sometimes your co-workers can be your enemies. And in this day and time, parents are enemies against children. But I want to tell you that today, the Bible says, and listen, I know what the world says. The, the world says to love your enemy and hate your neighbor. But we don't live in the world system. We live in the believer system. And in the believer system, love your enemies as well as your neighbors. Okay, okay, you don't get it. Let me help you out. So who should you love? You should love your enemies. Now, your enemies, I had the opportunity of getting on Facebook in a, a group called The Two Secrets. Mind you, it's not a good group to be in because they really, really say who they really are. But let me tell you this, I've come to understand, I don't care what stand you have, I don't care what you represent, my job is not to hate you, my job is to love you. It says, who should you love? Love your enemies. So, your enemies can be anybody. Matter of fact, if they don't believe in what you believe in, it's okay, love them anyway. If they don't treat you right, love them anyway. Even if Martin Luther King, they were beaten in the street. They were spit on them. They had holes against them. But guess what? He said, love them anyway. I don't know about you guys, but that can be a hard situation. How can you love somebody that does wrong to you? Okay, here you go. Love, he says who? Love your enemy. How I'm going to love them. He says, bless those that curse you. Woo. How I'm going to bless somebody that just spat me in my face? How in the world I'm going to bless somebody that smashed my name to the ground? How in the world? Because let me tell you something. Violence is just not physically. Sometimes your words can be violent. And sometimes you have to understand, even though you treat me wrong, and it hurts, yeah. I still have to love you. Yeah. And so he says, he says, you got to pray for them. You got to bless them. You got you to you 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 lift them up. So Jesus even tell you how to love. So let me tell you something. If anybody got any, any enemies in the room on Monday morning, my, 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 my challenge is for you to send them some flowers. Send them a box of candy. And say, in spite of how you think about me, I still love you. Because you know what love does? Love is like Clorox. Love, even though hatred muddies the water, Clorox are cleared up. And sometimes there's power in love. He says, why should you love him? This is why, this is why you should love him. Is that we are all children of God. Even though they don't mind not, not act like it, God still loves them. And if you're a believer, let me tell you something. I don't care what you think about a person, but when it comes to God, he loves them. Let me end the story with this right here. Thank you, Bob. I'm coming, I'm coming down now. Uh, let me end the story right here. In 2008, November 2008, we found ourselves in the Lee County courtroom. My brother had been murdered, and it was the opportunity for us to speak to the young man that killed my brother. All, all seven of my mother's children got up and spoke from the podium and said, yes, he deserves the death penalty. Yes, lock him up for the rest of his life. He, he deserved what he did to my brother because we had hatred in our heart because of what he done to our family. After all seven of mama's children got up and spoke what we should do, my mother got up, being a Christian most of her life. She said, Judge, I want to put this, I want to speak directly to this young man. She said, young man, she said, I forgive you for killing my son. I love you. And if you ever need a mom, you call me. Because she understood how powerful is love. At this time, we're going to pause for a presentation by our chairperson, Robert French. Mr. Williams, forward. James, could you come forward? No, we're a, let me, we're a small branch. We're a
we're a small branch. We're not financial like a lot of other branches do. But we do try to give all our gifts who come and share their gifts of their spiritual, their knowledge with us, something they can take along. Remember, it's probably better than mine. Uh, here we have original North Carolina flag, 7076, I believe. You are a history major and an attorney. You probably know more than I do, and it is a signed number print. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> you know, I, I've, um, I've been around, I'm not, I've been around a long time, and um, I've, I've received some awards and accolades, but I tell you, this means a lot coming from this organization on this day. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for bearing with us. And again, thank you so much, Mr. Williams, for being with us today. We're going to have Miss Ravine, and I can't pronounce your last name, so I'm not going to mess it up. She's going to come and, and give us a selection at this time, and then we will have a message from Pastor Ray. What's that last name? Prinsler. I hate to mess up a name. We're going to have the selection, and then Pastor Prinsler will come to us at that time. And following him will be the Tempton Congregation of Choir is going to come to us again, and then Pastor Barry Palmer will come with our last message. You will come in that order. Thank you. Is Ravine still here? Pastor Ray, is he still here? Okay, you can come at this time. Thank you. Let's give him a hand as he comes forward. historical piece, Father Daniel, for the preaching of the word. Amen. Tell your neighbor 56. Come on, tell your neighbor 56. 56. It's been 56 years, August 28, 1963. And his famous speech, Martin Luther King, put out for civil and economic rights an end to racism. In August 28, 1963, from a speech I had a dream. 56 years. 56 years ago, moved to gather in a peaceful demonstration and raise their voices as a mighty blow to injustice. But that was 56 years ago. 56 years. That the road was paved with tears, desperation, blood, and death. That was 56 years ago. But today we continue to see white supremacy Motorized violation and suppression, systematic racism, scapegoating, yes, scapegoating. Like the Jews were blamed and used as a scapegoat, Nazi Germany, 
and save the concentration camps. Like the Japanese Americans were placed in concentration camps from 1942 to 1945. Today, Latinos are the scapegoat of America. We're being described as rapists, criminals, uh -huh. and placed in cages. Yeah. Today you might be gathering here just for a celebration. But this is more than just a celebration. Yes, it is. This is a reminder that if we stay quiet, nothing changes. Yes. Conformity is the enemy of progress. The road is not finished. It was only paved. Yeah. We need bricklayers to continue the work, mm -hmm. to continue to pave the road. We need individuals who continue to fight against racism, mm -hmm. injustice, right. moral and civil corruption. In regard to racism, it's not a God-given behavior. Racism is a learned behavior passed down from your loved ones, from your friends, and from your associates. No one is burned being a racist. I hear many people say, I am colorblind. I don't see the color of the skin. Hear me out. When you say you are colorblind, you deny yourself the opportunity to grow in your understanding of your neighbor's suffering and challenges. I'm going to say that again. When you say you are colorblind, you deny yourself the opportunity to grow in your understanding of your neighbor's suffering and challenges. And you deny the other person the opportunity to be understood. We got enslaved. It's not over. Yeah. Still continue. Systematic racism. Scapegoating. We still have slavery in America. We have become slave of our own egocentric, ethnocentric, and racist point of view of life. We? We're not the divided state of America. We are the United States of America. And we are a great nation. We are a great nation not because of our military power, but because we don't back down in the face of injustice. Yeah. We don't back down in the face of racism. So what are you here for then? What is your intention here today? Finish with that. I know Martin Luther King was just not speaking about the African Americans. But we Latinos, we are known as the brown people, racially known as the brown people. A few years ago, I was speaking with somebody, and this person said to me, Pastor Ray, I understand this. The Latinos are the new black in America. We are the scapegoat. We're not criminals. We're not rapists. We're not taking your jobs. We're not taking anybody's job. We're putting food on your table as we work in the field for pennies. That's who we are. We're not terrorists. We have a generation of young people, our descendants, 
that we have the right to vote. And they will not forget what's happening today. Let us walk in this light that we are to do right at all times. In the face of injustice, racism, scapegoating, or whatever you want to call it, we all have the same blood running through our veins. We all face challenges and sufferings. So if you join me for a second and bow your head. Father God, we pray for America. We pray for this nation. We pray for a political system. And we ask that your spirit once again Revive America and revive Sanctuary. And that your spirit will put in each and one of us that love that Brother Daniel spoke of. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Thank you. God bless you. How did I make it all these years? How did I make it this far? Through the valley and over the hills. You know it had to be God. How did I make it through the storm?
Amen. Give honor to praise. God's grace. If it had not been for God's grace, we couldn't have made it this far. Praise the Lord. We come this afternoon giving honor to those in the house and uh, this house and the pastor of this house. So we thank God for you. Thank God for the members of the NAACP organization for their opportunity to come and to let God let you know what the freedom is about. Let you know what the dream is about. We know that Martin Luther King had a dream, but we know that the dream has not died. Even though it seems like that everything has gone a different way. It seems like that the dream have been sheltered down. It seems like if they killed the dreamer, that the dream would stop. I'm here to tell you that the dream cannot stop. But the dream shall go on just a little bit further. Because that dream that he had, you can't always see it. But it's a dream that reaches down from above. I'm here to tell you today that the dream of a great man have went on before you. We know that some people can't see the dream for looking at the ashes. Well, we find out that it's a time come that when men should bow their heads. Uh, there come a time when men should begin to produce love one for another. But we find that the dream is still going on. I believe that uh, we can count on the dream uh, continuing in our lives uh, if we continue to lift up our heads unto the hills where cometh our help. Uh, all of our help come from above uh, through God who made heaven and earth. Uh, you can't fight against the man that made, made heaven and earth. You cannot win, but you have an overcoming spirit that God will give you the opportunity to continue dream, uh, the dream that looks farther than the natural eye can see. Uh, I believe that the dream come about when men begin to look to the heavens uh, and find that God is able to deliver you from under the massive, uh, massive side. But we know that God can do more than what we can even think or ask. Uh, but as we know that we need to pray to the Lord and ask God to move on our behalf. Uh, when God moves the hand of injustice can't stand. The hand of racism cannot stand. When you pray and ask God to do the work, you can't fight God because he's too big. God is able to do what you think that you can do, but God will give you the desires of your heart. But you have to seek after God. The only way that you can know him, the only way that you can see him, you must be born again. You got to have have the heart change, the change of nationalities, the change of racism coming from different nationalities come because the indignitations of a man's heart. When the heart is changed, a man will know the difference between right and wrong. He will know the difference between a lie and the truth. The Bible says Satan is an author of a lie, but Jesus is the truth and the light. No man can get to the Father except that he come by me. He said, and you know that America has been great not because of what man has done. America is great because God was from the foundation that it was built upon that man might look to the Lord and know what God would have us to know. Know what God wants us to know, but it takes God to, to make a change in a man's heart. We can talk to people we can legislate to people. We can look to people. But we got to look to God first. In all thy ways, the Bible says, acknowledge him. And he will, hallelujah, direct your paths. We need a direction to follow. We need to learn that we need to look unto each other for our uplifting, for our growth, for our understanding. But we need somebody to lead us back to where God wants us to be. The nation is turned upside down because of a lie, and the lie has made it what it's 
God is right now. And we know that we need the truth of God to come back and to realize that we got to lift up our heads out of the muck and the mire of disappointments and disappointments and survival for being who we are as a people, whether you're Jew or Gentile, black or white, yellow or red, whatever the case might be. But God is able to deliver you if you just look to him. And whenever you look to him, he'll give you some direction. Let the mind of the people be changed because of the heart change. When the heart is changed, the mind can be changed also. But God knows all about it. God is a good God, and he's the one that can do whatever God would want us to do. God is able to do more than what we think or ask. My Lord and my God, uh, he's able to give you what you need if you just ask him. You have not but because you ask not. Uh, when you ask him sometimes, you don't believe God knew what he said. Uh, but the day today, God cannot lie. He will not lie. But whatever he said is going to come to pass. We know that he has a place for every one of us. We know that the dreams have come along in time and past. But we find out that the dream was trying to be stopped at Calvary's cross. But I'm here to tell you that at Calvary, the victory was won. The God of victory, and the master stood on the cross. And it lay right there. He took upon you, your sin, my sin. And he took upon us all of these things of the sin that has down for the love who have built up. The Bible said that righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is a reproach to any man. If you got reproach, then you don't have something that you need to make things right. But I'm here to tell you today that God is able to do it for you. But you got to look to him and live. You got to look to him for the injustice to be straightened out. I know that we have to stand up and give our voices, but we stand up and tell the world that, that Jesus is the Christ also. Let them know that he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man can get to heaven but by through Jesus Christ. The word. The word in the book of John, first chapter, and the word was word was made flesh, and it dwelled among us. And lo and behold, we handle him. We talked to the master. We felt the master. Now we can know him in the free part of our sins. But we need to know who he is. How can you call on him who you don't know? You gotta know the man. And if you don't know him, you can't call on him because you don't know who he is. But I'm here to tell you today that God has got what you need. Uh, he has the space for you. He will give you the desires of your heart. Praise be to God. I'm through with it now. We thank God for you. May God bless you. It's good to know who he is because the dream ain't dead yet. But the dream is past your sight. Past your sight. You can see where he is. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory in the name of Jesus. Come on, Sister Matthew. Praise the Lord. Let you have this mic on time. Amen. Do not our hearts burn as these pastors come before us this, this afternoon. We thank God for all that our hearts and our minds have heard from the history uh, lesson that we have received to the uh, messages from our pastors to the young people who danced and the musicians. We just thank God for all that he has done during this uh, event today. At this time, we're going to ask um, Brother Finch, our coordinator, if he will recognize our special guests that are still with us. At this point in time, uh, Dr. Shine, we are you still with us? Yes. All right, he asked for a couple minutes to tell us about his grade school. And then Patrick Kelly will bring us up on what's going on in Lee County. Good. But I want to thank all of those who are political office holders. Come on up. <laughs> Bill Bergen is always a pleasure to see you and your wife Ann with us. 
and those candidates, and Sherry Womack and company, and friends. Sherry, stand up. Now, you know, come on up here where they can see you. I'll take 30 seconds and be out your way pretty much. Dr. King said the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Just stand real briefly to tell you about Mena Charter School. More is now achievable. That is a free public school that is opening the doors August of 2020. We are grades K through five. We are spring curriculum, dual language school. We'll be housed in the Kendall Shopping Center. Uh, we encourage you, if you are interested, to please go to our website. We have little pamphlets that's on your table. Registration is now open. Uh, again, for any student grades K through five, uh, we look forward to serving and to helping our children be successful and to have good character as they grow into our community to be leading citizens in Lee County. Thank you. All right, Patrick, this is the Wheel of Fortune. Come on, round out. <laughs> I'll definitely be brief. Main things I want to say is the pretty much an update from the school system, and I'm, a lot of people in this room are, are Need to be thanked for this, and it was a dream of many local leaders in this county. But WV Wicker Elementary School has reopened, and again, with a lot of help from many people in this room, that WV Wicker once again is a place of learning for students of, of Lee County, and it is definitely moving forward with our STEAM Academy and how well it's doing, and our students just love being there. Overall, the school system is doing great, but again, it takes a village to raise a child, and everyone in this room has a way to touch a child every day. And it's, again, thanks for all of the school system, the county commissioners, and everyone that helps us move forward. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Finch. All righty. <laughs> Sherry Womack, got me good to say, you're going to the school board, and you're good to go. I'm good to go. I'm blessed to be here. All righty. Thank you all for coming. Did we not recognize anybody? Thank all the pastors. Thank all those folks who took the time out there. Pastor Gene Cobb, we love you. We appreciate you turning your Davenport Center over to our youth year after year. May God continue to bless you in this congregation, which you have done for our community. Thank you, and we're over always. All right. And with that, Senator Bergen, we can't, you got to have some words. Amy Dalrymple, come on, you got at least one or two words, right? <laughs> Bob, I want to thank you, and I want to thank St. Luke's for having um, having this. This is uh, always wonderful to come here, and um, the, I wanted us to recognize the folks that served. I always say, you know, I always take a, take time to, to acknowledge who who are the ladies and gentlemen that that fix the food and everything. Are they somewhere still here? Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just real quickly, it is an honor to serve um, uh, in the Senate and to represent Lee County, and I've been in Lee County a lot. There's a lot going on in Lee County. There's going to be a lot more opportunities for jobs. Uh, you got a great um, uh, mayor and a board. you got a great uh, county commissioners, and a lot of us are working together, and so we'll be making a lot more announcements this year. And Bob, again, thank you for having me. This has been a wonderful event. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Lee County Commissioners, I, I just um, join you today and I'm honored and humbled to be a part of this ceremony thank, or celebration, thank you Bob, and, and the local chapter for having us. Um, in Lee County, we are very, very blessed by God. This past year, um, as Patrick said, we opened WB Wicker School, so that's another opportunity for our young people in Lee County. Um, just recently before Christmas, we had two amazing announcements um, with two large companies coming, over $600 million in investment added to our tax base, um, 
about 300 plus jobs uh, and, and another phase to come, high paying jobs. And as Senator Bergen said, we have more announcements coming. So we are very, very blessed in Lee County. So I, I, I think we're doing the right thing because God seems to keep blessing us. And, and as we heard before, um, as we stay on the right path, God will continue to bless us. So thank you for letting me be a part of your day. And our closing remarks will be come from our president, Mr. Irvin Fox. Short and sweet. Thank each and every one of you for being here this evening. And we are so gracious for you. And we look forward to again on next year. God bless you. And may you continue to grow in whatever endeavor you are. And we just love you. And thank you again for being here. Because without you, it wouldn't have been this good. Thank you. Pastor Simmons will now come with our benediction and closing prayer. Just want to make a quick remark before we uh, leave today. Uh, we live in perilous times. And I would just like to suggest that we had three pastors here and a speaker. Don't forget what they said. There's only one solution to our situation. We live in perilous times. We live in times that truly scares many of us, or should I say most of us. But one thing is for certain. It reminds me of history, going back to Nebuchadnezzar, going back to when the ancient Israelites were in slavery. Keep in mind how that history unfolded. Keep in mind the fact that Moses even went to Pharaoh and asked him to let his people go. But what did God do? He hardened his heart. What is happening today in our society? You know, we get become despaired and upset about what's going on, but it's nothing more than the past coming back to haunt us. People that are doing things that's wrong, many of them can't help it. They don't even know why they're doing it. But the bottom line is simply this. Depend on God and everything is going to be okay. We can't only depend on God. We've got to turn back to him. We've got to begin to learn to keep his statutes and his commandments. And when, he, when we do that, he is going to feed his people, and we are his people without exception. If all hearts are clear, we will please stand. With the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us until we meet again, and we say all of that in our Heavenly Father's name. Let us all say, Amen and Amen. Shake someone's hand as you leave.